um, I played with the calculator before I left. I was able to install a program successfully. Uh huh. So that I cannot figure out for the life of me how to get it to run or to do it right. And oh. what I figured out too is like, you know how when you've been trying to send it over to me, I've been clicking where it says receive mode, ready to receive. Uh huh. I ignored that whole process and just plugged my calculator in the computer and it worked that way. But if I if I can receive first, that's when it said there was an error. So maybe I can't get it through here, I just need to not hit receive. Maybe. Uh, we could certainly try. try yeah. Well, good afternoon to you. We are, where are we? I wanted to, um, there was a couple tricky ones in 7.5, so I wanted to have Monique brought to my attention. So I wanted to uh, give you a little bit more time and go back and do one of the more tricky ones out of 7.5. This one in particular, right? Was this the hardest one, Monique? It was yeah, not, no. not really. This is the hardest one that you, you've done them all, right? Yeah. And this, was this the hardest, though? Right, right, I know you did, but this is the only one you had to subtract, though, on, yeah. is that right? No, okay. Uh, but five and six are a little bit more. Uh, six was the hardest one, I thought. Just, once I figured out how to do it, it really wasn't hard, because it was like, just it was just setting up the matrix like we did before. Okay. So, like, we might want to do that. All right, well, let's, let's, let me set up a couple of these. Six was crazy. All right, so let's take a look at numbers. I'm going to step back for just a little bit, and then I'm going to... Jump for it because we really got to get through eight uh, two today for sure, which is Venn diagrams, which is not easy either in a totally different way. So, all right, so seven point five. Let's take a look. Simplex applications. So this is the kind where you're supposed to, you know, read the words and set them up and let your calculator do the work once you have the setup, right? With the simplex program. Um, oh yeah, one thing we learned is the simplex. Sometimes it takes two. To three. To three. You keep hitting the button until it says final. Matrix. What? matrix, that's it. Final matrix. So, uh, so yeah, so, so let me, yeah, so um, let me write that first. Whenever you use the simplex program on your calculator, and I hope everybody has that now and is able to do that, I can download it today if you, for some reason, haven't got it at this point. Whenever you use the simplex program on the calculator, keep... Hitting enter until it says, and not, it doesn't say answer, it says final. So it says final. I think you're right. I think it says final, final matrix, matrix. Mm -hmm. until it says final matrix. So you need to get the final matrix on the screen. That's, um, and, and, and then at that point, do, don't hit enter after that. Because you won't be able to move to the right. And you need to move to the right to see all the rest of the table. So, so in other words, it's very important how many times you hit enter. So you keep hitting enter. Normally it's just once. I, the ones I did in class, I you hit it once, boom, final matrix, there you go, you're done. But sometimes it's two or even three times. So it's not tedious, but you just hit it. Hit it, hit it, and it keeps going. Matrix, matrix, and final matrix. As soon as you see final matrix, don't hit it one more time. I mean, you could. It's not the end of the world. You can just go back and redo it. But if you hit it one more time, it'll say done at the bottom, but then it freezes the screen, and you can't go to the right because, it, you know, these are pretty big, and you're only seeing about half of it on the main screen. So if you leave it, you know, just when it says final matrix and don't hit enter again, then you can move back and forth and see the whole matrix, and then you can hit the last enter when you're all done done. <laughs> Got your answer and everything. All right, so let's try this one in particular. And maybe number six. All right, so how do you do this? Well, as an organized way of going about this, I was encouraging you to just look at what they're asking for. What are they asking for? Um, boxes, assortment one, assortment two, assortment three. So you put that right across the top. Assortment one, assortment two, and assortment three. Those go right. So whatever they're asking for, you know, how many, how many oats and how many barley or what, whatever it is they're asking, put that right across the top sideways. And then whatever else they're talking about, what else are they talking about? Sour candies, lemon candies, lime candies. That goes down the left side. Sour, lemon, lime. 
that good? So it's always that way. Whatever things, see how I knew what goes across the top? Whatever it is they're asking for in the end goes across the top. So, so what, what they want the answers for goes across the top. The other stuff goes down the side. Then you just make a table. What's it say? Uh, assortment one contains four sour candies, four lemon candies, 12 lime. Assortment two, it sells for 940. I'll come back. Let me, I'll write the 940 up here for now. I got to come back to that and do something special. So 940. Um, assortment two is 12, four, and four, and sells for, what is it, 760? And assortment three is, what is that number there? 888. So 888 for assortment three, eight sour, eight lemon, eight lime. Sells for 11 bucks. Okay. <clears throat> now, keep going. We'll come back to the money thing in a little bit. Let's keep going the rest of the problem. Manufacturer costs, okay, there's more money. I'll, again, I'm going to come back to that. They can make 5,200 sour. 5,200 sour. Where's that going to go? Yeah, it's got to be the end of sour, which is the top, right? Sour goes across this way, doesn't it? Does that make sense, how you know where to put that? And then um, 4,200 lemon and 5,600 lime. So that's why laying out the table kind of helps you know where things go. Okay, now, on the bottom line always goes the money, the profit, the profit money profit or cost or whatever, you know, you're doing with the money. The money goes in the bottom, and remember, it's always negative down there. You always have to put those negative when you put them in to the simplex tableau. All right, now, how am I going to figure those out? Well, it's about profit, right? How do I know? Final question, maximum profit. Profit. Well, look, look, look what's going on here. They say that they sell... Right there, look at that number. Assortment one has four sour, four lemon, 12 limes, and sells for $9.40. Now, is what you sell something for the same amount as the profit? No. Not the same amount, right? You got to take out your costs, right? They sell assortment number one for $9.40, but what does it cost them to produce it? That difference is profit, right? So profit equals what you sell minus the cost, mm -hmm. right? So um, if it if nine forty is what they sell it for, what does it cost? What well, says right here? The cost is twenty cents for each sour, twenty five for each lemon, and thirty for each lime. And assortment one has four for twelve sour lemons and limes. Right? You with me on that? So I can come up here. Let me come up here where I got some room. And I'll do um, the cost uh, for assortment one. What is it going to earn? No, no. Profit, huh? I want to figure out the profit. Because that, that's what goes down here in this bottom row is profit, right? I'm trying to find the numbers in that bottom row. So the profit for assortment one, what is it? Well, they make $9.40. That's what they sell it for. Take away what it cost them to produce assortment number one. What did it cost them? 20 cents for each of the sour candies that are in assortment one. Well, you got four, four sour candies in assortment one. Four times 20 cents. Minus four lemon candies. Those cost 25 cents each. Minus 12 lime candies. Those cost 30 cents each. So what is that? 940. Well, if you subtract all that out, um, assortment one will be what? A four dollars? Mm -hmm. Is that what it comes out? The profit on assortment one, each box of assortment one, they sell, they're profiting four bucks. Does that make sense how we came up with that? This is a harder one. You don't normally have to do all this like hand. Side calculation. Normally, you can just throw the numbers in the table and hit the buttons on the calculator, you know. This is a particularly difficult one. I think this is probably the hardest one where you guys need this little side calculation first. And then the negative four will go right there. Remember, you put a negative, right? You do the profits negative. I can show you why if you're interested, but I did that before in the earlier lecture, so I just 
not going to do it today, but grab me after you want to see why that's coming out negative. But that is the rule. You just put it in negative. Does that make sense for the first one? And then assortment questions. We good? Assortment two. So what would be the assortment two? Well, assortment two sells for what? 760? Right here? Yeah. 760. But take away what assortment two costs. What assortment two costs? 12 of the sours. 12 times 20 cents each. Four of the lemons. Four times 25 cents each. Four of the limes. Four times 30 cents each. So I don't know what that is. What is it? Oh, okay. Comes out $3. So they're, they're profiting $3 on each box of assortment two they sell. So we put down a negative three down there. Thank you. That makes sense? And then assortment number three. What's, what's that come out to be? So here, I'll, I'll erase. I'll come up here and do it. Assortment three, what's the price they get for assortment three? 11 bucks. They get 11 bucks minus, assortment three has eight of the sours, 20 cents each. Eight of the lemons, 25 cents each. Eight of the limes. 30 cents each, and so sort number three, what is that? Five. five, they make five bucks on each assortment three, so put a negative five down there. There's always a, well here, yeah, zero there. Everybody got that. Now I'm going to turn it into a simplex tableau in just a second. Was everybody good to there so far? Questions to that point. Is that making sense? Now, let me just grab these numbers on the right here and slide them over. Because basically, this is how you do the simplex tableau. We got that bottom row uh, where we put in the negatives. And then basically, you just make ones down the diagonal here. Remember this? You just put ones down the diagonal. Wait a minute. Oh, to the bottom as well. What am I doing? One more. And then put those answers we had over there. What were they? 5,200 and uh, 4,200 and 5,600. And this one's always zero. So you see how right here I filled in a bunch of ones down the diagonal? That's what you always do in the simplex tableau. So you put in your table, you know, with all your stuff with your negative profits on the bottom. And then you fill in... How do you, you know how far to go? Well, you got to go all the way to the bottom. So I had to keep, I had four, four of them, so I had to put four ones. Put zeros everywhere else, and then the answers on the right. Zero always in the lower right-hand corner. Put that in your simplex tab, make that matrix A, and hit the buttons on your calculator. So that's, it's ready to go. Type it in just like that. It's a what? It's a four by, one, two, three, seven, four by eight? Looks like a four by eight matrix. So put that in matrix A now. And then go to the simplex program and tell it to go, and it'll crank it out for you. So if you have any trouble from there, grab me. Well, do you know how to get the answer on that? So if you type all that in, or let me do it as well. Put all that in. So matrix. What is it? It's a four by eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sure you put in the negatives. You don't use the subtraction button, right? It really hates that. Negative is different than subtraction. All right, so put all that in. Do program, simplex, go. So first time I hit the button, or maybe I should show you on the overhead here.
All right, we got it up there. Focus it in here. Okay, so, so I got it all in there. Here it is. It's in matrix A. There. Whoops. <laughs> Had a little trouble here. Matrix A. There it is. So I entered the whole thing. A 4 by 8. It's all in there. Then just go second, quit. So I'm quitting at the top. Once you've got the matrix, you just quit that. Then you go and you hit the program button, which is somewhere I can't see. Oh, it's down here. A little, yeah, there it is. See PRGM. Hit the program button. It says simplex program. You hit enter, program simplex, enter. There it is. So that's, but notice that doesn't say final, does it? That means that's the first step. Okay, I'm going to hit enter again. Enter again. Boom. There's the second one. No final matrix yet. Hit enter again. Final matrix. So don't hit enter again. If you do, you're not going to be able to move. See, right now I can move to the right and go over and see everything I need to see. If you hit enter, watch what will happen if I hit enter. If I hit enter one too many times, it'll go done. And then when I move, it ain't moving anywhere. See what I'm talking about? So let me go back here. Program, enter. So one, two, three. So final matrix. So there's when you get your final matrix. Okay. So let me write that down then. So final matrix. So we got four by eight. So what do we got? So this is one. So like that third one, first second, okay. Like that, and then one eighth minus one sixteenth. One sixteenth zero one sixteenth. Okay, so I'm getting that. Minus one eighth, one fourth. One fourth, one eighth. Fourth, minus one eighth, three eighths. Three eighths. Zero minus one sixteenth. One eighth, three sixteenths. Three sixteenths. And um, zero, 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 one. And the last one, 125, 375, 375, 375, 175, 2950, 175, 2950, okay, so, so there we go, so now, okay, so great, so where's my answers then, remember how it works, you just find, remember this is, this is um, assortment one, assortment two. I'm running out of room here. Try that again. Final matrix, assortment one, assortment two, assortment three. Like that. So assortment one, one, boom, go all the way to the end. Remember, the answers are at the end, wherever the one is. That one tells you to go there. Assortment two, it's on the top, tells you to go there, 125. So assortment one, uh, how many boxes assortment one? Be... Um, 175. Sortment 2, 125. Sortment 3, put the 1, boom, 375. And what profit will they make? 2950. There it is. 2950 max profit. So that makes sense how to read those? You just find where the all zeros and the ones are. It makes right. a lot of sense when you're in the <laughs> It's always clear. That's how I felt with my teachers, too. And you go home, and you're like, what did that teacher do? <laughs> well, that's when you get the YouTube. You can play it again. Instant replay. What did that teacher do? All right. Good questions on that. So let's take a look. All right. Let's see. Okay. So part of a weight reduction program, men designs a monthly exercise program consisting of bicycling, jogging, swimming. What's their question? Bicycling, jogging, swimming. So right away, I go, okay, bicycling. Jogging, swimming, right across the top, huh? Whatever they're wanting for me, I put right across the top. Then the other things will go down the side. So, let's see. He would like to exercise at most 32 hours, three hours to swimming, jog, no more than total number of hours. But calories burned by the... I'll come back to that stuff. Are the calories burned by the bicycling, jogging, and swimming are 200. So, so here come the calories. It's 200 calories by bicycling, 527 by jogging, 263 by swimming. How many hours should be allowed for each activity to maximize the number of calories burned? Oh, that's, that's like the money. Oh, that's like the money because that's what you're trying to maximize. That's your big profit, so to speak. You're trying to burn calories. You see that that's playing the role of money? 
Normally they say, you know, how do you make max profit or how do you have the lowest cost? This time they're saying how do you earn the most? So whatever you're trying to do the most of or the least of, that's your bottom line. So that's my, I should put that down to the bottom. So that's going to go down here. 200, 527, two, and they're going to be negative. You guys tracking with me? Do you see how whatever your main objective is, in this case it's calorie burning, those are, you know, normally it's money. Those go on the bottom and with negative signs. They're like your profit. Your profit is burning calories. Like that. Good? Okay, now, what, what about all the other? They're saying some weird things. Let's go back. He would like to exercise at most, back in the top line here, 32 hours at most. What does that mean? That means however much he bicycles, 1B plus 1J plus 1 that. He wants that to be at most less than or equal to 32 hours. That's the total of bicycling, jogging, and swimming. Right? If, if B represents how many hours he's going to bicycle each week, if J represents how many hours he's going to jog each week, if S represents how many hours he's going to swim each week, or month, month, this is a month, huh? Month. He would like to exercise at most 32 hours in a month. Good? All right. And the next one says he would devote at most three hours to swimming. So swimming itself is less than or equal to three. Zero B plus zero. Yeah, th this one's coming at us a little funny, huh? To see how that means that. Right? Because remember, B, B represents how many hours of bicycling per month, J for jogging, S for swimming. So basically, just swimming, you know, zero for the bicycle jogging, just swimming is less than or equal to three. At most three. Make sense? All three added up is less than or equal to 32. So this one's a little harder. They're not giving us really a table. We have to kind of think out the words. It's a little harder. And jog for no more than the total number of hours bicycling and swimming. Oh. Let me write that over here. Jog no more. Right here, I'm doing this line right. This is the hardest one of all. Jog no more. If it's not more, what is it? Less or equal. Jog no more. Jog less than what? Total of bicycling and swimming, B plus S. Right, is that what it says? Jog no more less than the total of bicycling and swimming. This right here. Now, you've got to turn, you got to get the letters on the left side, right? See how all the letters are on the left side and the numbers on the right? So I've got to reorganize this thing. Jump the B, jump the S, over. So you get negative B plus J minus S, S or equal to zero. I put them in that order because we have B first, then J, then S. So I just went ahead and ordered. But remember, when something jumps to the other side of the equal sign or less than or equal or whatever, it changes signs. Remember that? Does that make sense on that? So that would be negative 1B plus 1J, negative 1S, less than or equal to zero. That's what that's really saying. That was tricky. That's why these are negative, by the way, because we jumped it. Because really, you're saying the calories, you want to add all those up, and you maximize it, and they jump to the other side and become negative. That's why. Anyway, there's really a zero here, too. So that was pretty tricky coming up with those equations. Right? I took this equation here, and then I just jumped the B and the S to the other side, and they became negative. Because you always want the letters on the left side, B, J, and S on the left side, numbers on the right. So I had to take this and jump the B and the S over. We good there. And now turn that into a simplex tableau. So get rid of these. And then just put in the, you know what to do now, right? Put in the ones down the diagonal. Fill in the other zeros. Like that, right? And what goes on the right side is those numbers. What were those numbers? 200. Oh, no, what were they? Was it? 32, 3, 0. Thank you. 32, 3, 0. And then we throw a 0 down there as well. So there it is. There's the simplex tableau, the big matrix you put in slot A. So everybody see how to do that? We get all the inequalities, and we fill in the ones down the diagonal, push the numbers on the right all the way to the right. We kind of stick in the big 
diagonal one zero thing right right in here and push the numbers on the right all the way to the right. Type that in and hit the buttons. Is that okay on that? Was five that hard too? I think it was a little tricky too. Those are tricky. Those are a little bit tricky. Yeah, those were good ones. Yeah, come see me if you want to do any more of those. I better get in at all similar. Totally changing gears. So we're, we're done with Chapter 7. We're done with all the linear programming and those kind of things. So now we're talking about Venn diagrams. Chapter 8, you know, is all about probability and <coughs> things like that. So, all right. This is a Venn diagram. We're going to do A union B. What does that little single quote mean on the B? Remember that? Opposite. Yeah, remember that means opposite of B. Opposite. So that little mark. And, and what does union mean? Union means unite com or com combine all together. Right? Okay, so how do I do this? Let me draw a big Venn diagram here. A big A and a big B. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to put in some shading according to what they're saying. I'm going to make A be red and B be blue or whatever. It doesn't matter. So what does it tell me first? A. Shade all of circle A. So here we go. I'm going to shade, uh, make lines in one direction. doesn't matter what direction. So there's all of circle A, right? I did what they said, all of circle A. Now over here, they're telling me do B prime or not B. That means not B, right? It's opposite of B. What's not in B? Shade everything not inside the confines of circle B. So that would be everything outside of circle B, right? Skip circle B. Shade everything outside of circle B. So that makes sense what I did. With the purple hash marks, I shaded everything outside of circle B. I shaded not B, right? The not B territory. So then, now, what do they want me to do with this U here? This U means unite. Put together all the shading you see everywhere. That's what the U means. Now, careful, in a minute, they're going to change the game, and they're going to put the symbol that way. Remember what that means? That's the U turned over. That means find the overlap. Just find where the crossings are. And that would be just inside the A only section if they did the overlap, but they're not. They're doing the U, which says they want everything shaded everywhere. So which one is the answer? It's that one. That makes sense? The U means unite, combine together all the shading anywhere. We don't care if it's red or purple or both, just take it all. That's what the U means. But in a minute, they're going to turn the U over and then it means overlap. That would, you know, the overlap would be only the, the A only section, not even the middle, right? If they had turned the U over. Does so that make sense Same what I did there? So you were saying shade everything. Combine all together. You means unite. Remember, I did the softball thing. I said, if our class is going to play softball with the English 1A that, that Michael and Monique are in, right? It just unites us all. Just everybody go out there, and we're going we're gonna to play. Right? Michael, big victory yesterday, right? Dodgers are off and running. <laughs> all right, so does that make sense? So if it, it's you, you just unite them all together like that. And if it's overlap, you take the overlap, the intersection. All right, let's try another one. So here we go. We'll try number three. All right. So, I'm going to do this one in two stages because it's got, because you should do the parentheses first. Remember how Matthew always do the parentheses first? So, let's just do the parentheses all by itself. Get an answer, and then we'll try to do a second stage where we finish. So, just that. 
All right, here's A, here's B. Okay, so let me let me encourage you. So take take one color, black or whatever, shade all of circle A. Isn't that all of circle A? And then take another color, or what, however you want, different symbol, whatever. Other, other direction, yeah, that's probably best. Just do the other direction for B. All of circle B. So I just shaded the two things they said so far. I'm not even, I'm just doing the parentheses right now. You with me so far? A minute ago, the last one I did, I did all of circle A and then not B because they had the, the complement on the B. Now I'm doing A, all A shaded, all B shaded, okay? Now what do they want me to take? All the shading anywhere? Remember, I don't, don't, even, don't even look at this right now. We're not even there yet. We're just doing the parentheses. Overlap, right? That U is turned over. Overlap of both shadings. Only take the overlap of both shadings, right? The U means unite everybody. The overlap, that'd be like if I said, who's in both classes, right? Just the people that are in, just, just Michael and Monique that are in this class and the English 1A, right? Mm -hmm. So just the overlap. So what's the overlap? It's just that middle section, huh? That's the only place where the two lines are crossing, where they're overlapping. So that makes sense. Now, we're not done yet. That's just the parentheses. That's just the first part of the problem. This is a harder one, right? You've got to do the parentheses first. Good. So now, now that we've got the first half of the answer, now I'll do part two. So this is part one. Part one, the parentheses. Part two now. Same kind of thing again. I'm going to draw circle A, circle B. But I'm going to put the answer from part one, the parentheses, in here. What is the answer from part one? Well, it's the middle. Just the middle, right? So part two is going to be part one. And let me go back. What was it? Erase what it was there. It was part one, unite with, be complement, not be. You with me on that? Does everybody see what I'm doing? This is the answer from part one, right? Just the middle. That's the end. Don't put any of the other stuff. Just the final answer from part one. All right? And now, to finish up part two, it's part one, the parentheses, united with not be. So what's not be? Shade everything that's not be. Everything not... Whoops, I'm supposed to go the other direction, huh? I'm going the same direction. Go, you know, shade the other direction so you don't... Get messed up. So everything not in circle B. Just keep your eye on B. Don't worry about anything else right now. Just everything not in circle B. I just shaded everything not in B territory. It's like gangs, and those are their territories, and you're staying outside of B's territory, right? I'm shading all the not B territory. Are you with me? So, so not B. That's not B. I shaded all the not B territory in black. I shaded the parentheses stuff, the answer from part one in blue. Now here's the question. What, what, what's between the part one and the not B? What's in the middle? Do I want to unite all the shading anywhere or just take the overlap? What's in the middle? Unite. Unite part one and not B, meaning all shading Anywhere. Unite means everybody comes together, right? All shading anywhere. So I want all the shading, the black, the blue, everything, because in the middle, in the final analysis, the final part is a U. Unite everybody that's shaded. Unite the blue, unite the black, put it all together, right? So, so what answer is it, A, B, C, or D? It's D, right? And that's, that's the nice thing on these Venn diagrams problems. The answer is always in the last slot. So is that D? No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just joke around every time. <laughs> two D's in a row. Okay. Everybody give me that? The only thing not shaded is that B part. <coughs> See how we did it in two parts then? So do the parentheses first, part one. Get the whole answer from the parentheses. Bring that down as your part one shading. Then do the not B in part two. And then look in the middle. Unite. That's everything. Or overlap. Just the crossing. And they said unite. All right.
Really making it more complex. All right, so <coughs> put a big box with all three circles. What should you um, put it up here? A, B, C. So A, oops, I didn't make very nice circles. Let me try that again. Try to draw it neater than I am. A, B, and C. So you've got to make sure you're going to, um, what, what are you going to do first on part one? The parentheses, right? So A, B, C. So part one is the parentheses, which is not A, overlap, not B, right? So shade, not A. What's not A? Well, here, let me do a different color. Everything not in circle A. So just keep your eye on circle A and stay out of it, right? I'm doing not circle A right now. I don't care about B. I don't care about C. I'm not even looking at them. I'm just focused on staying outside of circle A. Not circle A. Good. All outside of circle A. Now, outside of circle B. Now go back, shade the other direction, everything outside of circle B. Be careful with this. Keep your eye on the ball, so to speak. Keep your eye on the B and just stay out of it. Don't let A or C throw you off. Pretend they're not even there. Just stay outside of circle B. Just focus on B. B is all I care about. Just staying out of B. I don't care about whether I'm in A or not in A, in C or not in C. Who cares? Just out of B. That's all I care about. Okay, I shaded everywhere in blue outside of circle B. Good so far. What am I supposed to do? The parentheses said not A, overlap, not B, right? Still doing part one, the parentheses there. Okay, so where do they overlap? Right, because this says overlap. You guys with me? This is overlap. Both. Both lines, right? Where bo both lines cross, overlap. They cross each other. So where do the lines, so this is still part one. So part one here, where do the two lines cross and meet each other? Well, this zone and outside. Outside is one big zone, isn't it? The whole outside and the C-only zone. Does everybody see that? There's only two sections up there that have lines crossing, right? Anywhere outside, see, anywhere you want to look outside of the circles, and then this C-only. This is the C-only territory. No no parts of A and B, right? Those are the two Those are the two sections that are the answer to part one. I'm only halfway through. That, those are the answer to part one. So now come on down to part two. Draw your circles again. And this is A, B, C. And shade the answer you got, which would be so to part one. So part one would be here and outside. <coughs> Oops, a little more careful, a little more cautious. We good there? That's part one. Doesn't matter it's on the right side, left side, whatever. That's part one. And now I've got to do C to finish 
the, this is part two down here. Finish the problem now. Are we good? You guys tracking with me so far? Everybody see what I did? So I just shaded in black the answer we got from part one, which was the C only and the outside. C only and the outside, right? That was part one, the parentheses. Now for part two, our, uh, now we got to do C. Now, now what does that mean? Shade in purple, the other direction, C. Now some people go, okay, just like that, that's just C. No, 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 all of circle C, all of circle C. See how that's all of circle C? Don't have regard for A and B. That's the main thing. Focus in. It's kind of like what I'm always saying to my son when he's up to bat. Watch that ball. Make that ball your life. Focus on that ball. That ball is everything. Do that with the C thing. When you're looking at C, that C circle is everything. Don't care about A and B and the end. Just, I'm doing C. I'm doing C. I don't care whether A is there, B is there, A is not there, B is not there. Who cares? I'm doing C. C is my focus. I did all of C. Now, what do they want me to do for the final answer? What's the final connector? The U, the overlap. So where do, that's where the two lines cross, right? Lines overlap, lines cross. Where do the two lines cross? Only here. Right? Not the outside. Not, not out here. They don't cross out there. I don't see any lines crossing outside. I don't see any lines crossing where A and B and up here, but just the C only zone, huh? So the answer is the C only. Is it D again? Yeah. It is. It's D again, like I told you. It's D the test. Yeah, it's, we've got to be consistent, right? So that makes sense. That wasn't easy. So part one was the overlap of the not A and the not B. Put, we brought the part one answer down, put the part two C on there, and took overlap again. And there we go. All right. If you have trouble with that, see me. Play the YouTube word questions. All right. So, so let's take a look here. So in 2007, the percentage of children under 18 years of age who live with both parents was 69.1%. And on and on they go with the facts. So let me take that circle they're, they're giving me. Let me make a bigger one here, I think. We're going to basically use a Venn diagram to answer this question. Mother, father. Let's stand for mother and father, M and F. Mother, father. So what we're going to do... Let, let, me, let me show you what, what numbers mean, for example. If I put a, if I put a 10 here, well, here, let, let me start with the very middle. Say, say I, let, let, me, let, me put some, let, let me just make up some numbers and show you. 10, 20, 30, 40. I just made up some numbers totally. Let me explain what those numbers would mean. What that would mean is if these are kids, you know, children, basically anybody under 18, do they live with their mother only, father only, mother and father, or neither, they're orphans? So, um, what if this was the game? This was the percentages in America. Let's say I'm just making this up. But if those were the percentages in America, let's make sure we're making sense of that. How many children? What percentage live with both their mother and their father? Twenty percent. That would be the middle, right? Because you're because if you're that twenty, you're in both circles. You're both in the mother circle and the father circle. How many live with their mother only, not their father? That's the ten. Mother only. Now, now hear that, mother only is 10. That's different than if they say, how many live with their mother? That's different than mother only. People that live with their mother and their father live with their mother. And so do people who live with their mother only, both groups. So the answer would be 30, 20, and 10. 30% live with their mother, either mother and father or mother only. Do you see that? They're very technical on these questions. They mean what they say, they say what they mean, they don't mean anything else. You can't be like, can't be sloppy kind of like English is, where, well, I really meant, well, you got to say what you mean, and they're going to say what they mean, and nothing more and nothing less. So if they ask you the question, how many live with their mother only? Yeah, that's the 10. But if they say, how many live with their mother? And that's all they say. Technically, the answer is both the 10 and the 20. The 30% live with their mother one way or the other. 
right? And well, how about if they ask, how many live with their father only? 30. But what if they say, what percentage live with, with their father, have a father in the home? 50. That'd be the 30 and the 20. Is everybody seeing that? So that's the kind of thing we're going to do with all the rest of these Venn diagram word problems. They're very specific in what they say and mean. Okay. So with that in mind, let's try filling in what we can. They're saying um, 69.1 is both parents. 69.1. So where does that 69.1 go? Right in the middle. Because that's the percentage of both parents, huh? 69.1, that's good. We want them living with both parents. 69.1, living with both parents. They're in the mother's circle, they're in the father's circle. Good so far? And now it says live only with their mother is 25.5. So that goes right there, only with their mother. And live with neither parent, 3.7. Where's the neither go? Yeah, anywhere you want to put it, outside. 3.7. And then they're asking, how many live with their father only is the question. Father only, that's this right here, huh? Yeah, so how do we figure that out? Just add them up. Totally. Just add them up, subtract from 100. Right, got to be 100%. So just add them up, 25.5, 69.1, 3.7, so 813. 10, 18, 98.3. So take 100. Just use a calculator for all this, and you get 1.7. Yep, so it must be 1.7 here. And that's the answer. 1.7% live with their father only. Not the typical MO. Because many men are losers. By my, my personal opinion there. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> Questions on that one? We good there? Is it all good? All right, let's try another. Do as many of these can as we can as far as time allows. All right, so. So, um, how do I know it's three three circle Venn diagram right away? It says sales, college, real estate. Three qualities, you know, are mentioned. So those are our three circles. One. They'll never go higher than three. It's either two or three. They won't do four. That would be awful. Um, okay. So one, two, three. Sales. So I'll call this the S, sales. Or I can just write sales, I guess. Sales, experience, college, degree, uh, real estate. Real estate license. Okay, so there's three different qualities that a, a human resources director might have. They might have sales experience, they might have a college degree, they might have a real estate license, they might have two of those or all three of those or none of those, you know. And so that's what they're asking us to do is fill in the Venn diagram according to the facts here. All right. So, what does it say? We all, we all good? Get that picture on there? I want you to be able to think with me as we go here. Because it's probably not the way it's going to seem at first. You'll need to think, think carefully. 67 with sales experience. That's actual people. I don't think that's a percentage. There's a percentage? I don't know. Whatever. Whatever it is. 67. Where do I put that? Could I put that? For example, that's wrong, but many people think that's what you do. Why is that not right? They said 67 sales. I put 67 in the sales circle. What's the problem? Yeah, good. It doesn't say only, because really it means this plus this plus this plus this, all four make 67. I don't know what, I don't know how it's broken up yet. I'm not ready for the 67 number. Turns out I got to jump down here. That's where, you need to start bottom up on these. But I want you to see why I'm going to do that before I do that. See why logically I can't really do anything with the 67. I'm not prepared for that. The 67 is the whole S circle. I don't know what the different parts are. Right? So what you have to do is you have to start where uh, the best place to start is the very center, if you can. If you can find out the all three. Is that what this is? No, it's not quite. Oh, yeah, the 12 is. The 12 is. That's where I want to start. Yeah, see the 12? The 12 is sales, college, and so that is right in the middle. No question about it. Right? Because that's all three circles. There's no doubting or wondering. It's, it, it uniquely defines one section, you see. That 12 does. So we can put that in. Check. 
How about the 28? What does the 28 say? See if you can figure out the 28. It's the outside. <coughs> yeah, 28 have no sales experience, no college degree, and no real estate license, and will not get this job, probably. But they go on the outside. right? They're not in any circle. Let me give you this kind of information. Anytime they just see how some of these facts they're listing for us here? Some of these facts describe one thing, like sales, or college, or real estate. That's just one fact. Some of them describe two, sales and college. Sales and real estate. College and real estate. Those describe two. And then these last two facts describe three things. Sales, college, real estate. No sales, no college, no real estate. Whether they say yay or nay, I don't care. But if they give me information about three things, that uniquely defines one section. Did you catch that statement? That's really important. If you, like, like for example, what if I said, well, I want just that section right there. I want, I want just one, what, what we call is a basic section. I want just one little section. How do you find, you've got to have, that's more than just saying college. That's saying, like if I said, well, there's 10, maybe there's 10 here. So if, to know that, I would have to know there's 10 people that have the college, they're in the college, but they're not in the sales and they're not in the real estate. Say I'd have to have three pieces of information. See how that what? Yes, college, no, the other two. To know that, but to know any one specific location, you have to have three pieces of information. See how that works? So that's why I started at the bottom with the 12 and the 28, the two facts that had three pieces of information, because I know they would hone me in on one specific location. From there, I got to be more tricky. You ready? So the rest don't have three and are going to be, therefore, not honing me to one. Let's work backwards. Let's go to the 14. The 14 is college and real estate. Let me get rid of that 10. I made that up. The 14 is college and real estate. College and real estate. Where's that? Those two sections together make 14, they're telling me. So this has got to be two. See that? College and real estate, if you're in either one of these sections, you're in the college circle and you're in the real estate circle. Aren't you? Everybody see that? Even though it goes into the sales circle? Right, it has nothing to do with it. If I, say, I've got a, if I say I've got a college degree and I've got a real estate license, you go, well, what you, would you say about sales experience? I didn't tell you whether I got it or don't got it. I didn't tell you anything about that. So that's the thing about focusing on the ball, so to speak, right? Focus on what they say. Don't let other circles confuse you. Right? When somebody says they got college and real estate, that means they are in those two circles. Whether they're also in the other one or not, I don't know. They didn't say anything about that. They just said, I'm in the college, I'm in the real estate. That defines two sections. So notice the pattern. Whenever they give you two pieces of information, it, it really breaks it down to two sections. Whenever they give you three pieces of information, that nails you down to one section. Everybody see that? So two pieces of information, like college and sales, or college and real estate, or college and not real estate, or not real estate and not, not college, or whatever. Two pieces of information, it's going to be two sections. It's going to mean two sections on a Venn diagram. 18, have sales and real estate. So you try that. See what you can do with that. 18, have sales and real estate. Sales and real estate. So look at the sales circle. Look at the real estate circle. Find the two sections that are in both sales and real estate. Do you see them? It's these two, isn't it? Mm -hmm. six. So that's got to be six, huh? Yeah. Now there's 18 in sales and real estate. Whether they have a college degree or not, it didn't say. It just said there's 18 that have sales experience and a real estate license. Makes sense how we do this? We've got to work backwards. 24 have sales and a college degree. Sales and a college degree. Sales and a college degree. Those two, huh? Sales and a college degree. So that's going to be 12 and 12 to make 24. Sales and a college degree. Now, now we're in position to come back to these single facts. Like 24 have real estate license. 24 have real estate. Real estate is this whole circle. And they're telling me 24 real estate. So what do I do? 
6 plus 12 plus 2 and subtract it from 24, huh? What is that? 18, 20? Yeah, 20. And then so 24 minus 20 has got to be 4 here. To make that whole real estate circle be 24. Do you see the logic? Do you see how this all works? Next one, 35, have a college degree. 35, have a college. So 35, have a college. So it's 35, take away 12 plus 12 plus 2, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 35 minus, what's that, 24, 26. Is it 9? Okay. 9 to make a total of 35 in the college circle, huh? And lastly, 67, have sales experience. So 67 sales is 67 minus... Because uh, here's the sales circle, the, the 12 and 12 and 6. 67 minus, what's that? 30? 37? All right. We got every piece of information. Now, they're going to ask you a whole bunch of questions, but they're all going to be simple. They're just going to say this, this, this. Actually, I better show you those. So... Um, What's their first question? How many applicants? Yeah, we have to add up all those numbers for how many applicants. Every number there. So that's the first question. Number of applicants. So that would be, you got to be careful. 37, 12, don't miss anything. 12, 12, 6. Um, 9, 2, 4, and 28. Is that, what did it say? Is 120? 110? Oh, 110. 110, those all have to be. 110 applicants. All right, let me go back and try to answer that, see if there has so. So there's the answer. So, um... Yeah, I don't want to redraw that whole thing. So, um, how many applicants did not have sales? Well, I guess I can. So, sales, college, real estate. So, I'll put in here real quick. Sales, college. So, sales. So, I'm going to rewrite it real fast. See if you can answer the questions. It's making sense. Real estate. And what are the numbers? 37, 12, 12, 6. 7, 12, 12, 6. 12, 12, 6. 9, 2, 4, 28. 9, 2, 4, 28. Okay, here's how I did it. So how many applicants did not have sales? How many applicants did not have sales? Not sales. Not sales. I don't want to rewrite it. I don't got room. Not sales is... Here's the sales circle. So anybody not in the sale Again, don't let the other circles throw you off. Keep your eye on the ball, right? Not sales means you're not in the sales circle, period. Doesn't mean anything about the other circles. It means anywhere outside the sales circle. So that would be the 9, the 2, the 4, the 28. Those are all not sales, aren't they? So 9, 4, 2, 28. That's how I got the 43. Okay, next question. Sales in college, but not real estate. Remember, when they mentioned three facts, positive or negative doesn't matter, three facts, you know that's one location, isn't it? Three facts. So, sales in college, not, so they're in the sales circle, they're in the college circle, but they're not in the real estate. That's this particular 12, isn't it? See that? Three facts, one location. Lastly, how many had only real estate? That's just this location. Because only real estate is really telling you three facts. It's saying yes to real estate, no to sales, no to college. It's really telling you three facts, one location. See how that works? Good on that. These are long. I'm not going to sure how many I can get done. Okay, so number nine. So the... Um, We have, what, for this blood one, 
you can have type A antigen, type B antigen, and then you can have the RH. So A, B, and RH. If you have the RH, if you have the RH, that makes you positive. If you have no RH, that makes you negative. So that's how blood types are determined. You know, are you A positive? You know, B negative, A B positive, O negative. It all comes from the fact if you if you you know if you have A, you have if you if you have if you do not have A nor B, if you have neither A, A nor B, then you're type O. That's what type O means. You don't have A and you don't have B. And positive means you have the RH antigen. Negative means you lack it. It's not in you, it's negative. So that's how they determine blood type. All right, so let's go through it. So the three circles are A, B, and RH. So, yeah, probably I should help make sense of this. What if, what if, what if 10 people are right there? Let's, let's talk about what that means about those 10 people and what their particular blood type would be. B negative. How to negative? They're not in the RH circle. If you're not in RH, you're negative. Everybody tracking with me on that? Those 10 people would be B, because they're in circle B, they're not in A, so they're B only, and they're negative, not positive, because they're not in the RH circle. Is that good? How about if I put 20 people right there? What would those 20 people be? B positive, because they're in the B circle, and they're in the RH. They have RH. They're positive. So you got to see that RH thing as positive negative. If you're in RH, you're positive. If you're out of the RH circle, you're negative. That's what it means to be a positive or negative blood type. You have the RH antigen or you don't. Make sense? What if, what if I had 30 people right there? What would those 30 people be? A, B negative. They're in A, they're in B, and they're not RH. They're negative. <clears throat> what about, now let's get, it gets a little more tricky, what about if there were 40 people right here? Typo. Typo. They're not in A or B. If you're not in A or B, right right here I said, if you're not in A nor in B, you're a typo. That's what typo means. It really just means you're not in A or B. Typo, and are they positive or negative? Positive. They're in the RH circle. O positive, right? That'd be O Positive. What about if you have 50 people right there? That's O negative. Because you're not in A or B and you're not in RH. You're O negative. Is that good? How to read all those? So then they're going to give you a bunch of facts based on all that kind of stuff. They're going to say, okay, um, let's see what we got. They're going to say, now should I start here? 46 in circle A. No. That's, who knows, right? That A has a lot of sections. I, I, don't, I can't start there. I don't want to start there. Oops, I did not mean to do that. So, all right. So, um, so instead, we start at the bottom, huh? Four have A, B, and RH antigens. Four. Where do those go? Right smack in the middle. That's the four that are A, B positive, right? A, B, and RH. <coughs> Right, 31 have the A and the RH antigen. 31 are in the A circle and the RH circle. I mean, they're in these two sections. Remember, with two facts, two sections. Three facts, one section, right? Two facts, two sections. So this must be, what, 27 to make 31 total in the A and the RH circle? Everybody okay with that? Okay, now, where are we going from there? Uh, 17 have none. Well, that's out here, huh? Good so far? Next fact, 82 in the RH circle. I can't do that right now. There's, skip it. There's two sections still unknown in the RH circle. I can't, so 82 is the total of the whole RH circle, I still don't know those two sections. Skip it. Go, cause let's go to another fact. 11 in the B and the RH. 
11 that are in the B and the RH. What can I do with that? Yeah, is it seven right there to make eleven to make the these two sections have seven and four eleven in the B and the RH, right? Now I can go back down to that eighty two RH that I skipped. Eighty two all together in the RH circle, I can figure out what's missing in the RH circle, can't I? Right? What it is? Eighty two RH. <coughs> 82 RH, so that would be 82 minus 27 plus 4 plus 7. 82 minus 38, which is some number I don't know. 44? 44. Is that what she said? Yeah, thank you. 44 there to make a total of 82 in the RH circle. See how we're piecing this together? 18 in the B circle? Skip it. Can't do it. Do the five. Jump to the five. Five in the A and B circle. One right there. To put five total in the A and the B. Now go back to the 18 in the B circle. I can do it. Six, right? To make 18 total in the B circle. To track with that. Finally, 46 in the A circle. Now I can do that. I think. Is that 31, 32... 14, 14, now we've got everything. Now we can answer all their different questions. Is that good? Is that making sense on all that? Let's see what their questions are. All right, so now let's go answer their questions. Okay, a lot of questions on these. There's one more question. Yeah, I know, I, I don't got room for it. <laughs> so let's answer these and we'll be done. So this is A, B, R, H. The numbers are 14, 1, 4, 27. Yeah, 27. 7 there in the middle, 6, 44. And 17, okay. So, yeah, so is everybody see what we're doing? O positive. Do you see why it's the 44 right here? Like we talked about, because you're not in A, not in B, yet you are in RH, you're positive. I just, what was question C? It's off the screen now. Too many questions. Nobody knows. It's over, huh? <laughs> so, yeah, part, part B was exactly... One antigen. Exactly one. Do you see how to figure that out? Exactly one would be the 6, the 14, and the 44. Because those are in exactly one circle. They're not in an overlap of any two circles, are they? So that's how I got that. 6, 14, 44, 64. And then part C said exactly two. So how many are in exactly two circles? That 1 is in exactly two circles, that 27 is in only two circles, and that 7 is in only two circles. The 4 in the middle is in three circles. Don't count him. Right? 27 plus 1 plus 7. Is that 35? Yeah. All right. And then O positive, we did that. How many had AB positive? Where's AB? Oh, no, AB. AB blood. Oh, AB positive. Yeah, AB positive. That's the 4, right? They're in A, they're in B, and they're in RH. That's so that. How many had B negative? Well, that's the 6 because you're in B, you're not in RH, and you're not A, or you would be called AB blood. You're B negative, so you're only B, you're not in RH. O negative? How many have O negative? That's that 17 right here. They're not, they're not in A or B, they're O, and they're not in RH, they're negative. All right, well, that's all the time that we have for that. So we didn't quite finish, so we'll finish that up later. So only thing due 
is 7-5 is due again. 7-5 <laughs> is due Thursday. We'll finish up 8-2 and 8-3. Next time they'll be due later. We'll stop there.